Knock, knock. Pastor Lucas contacted another born-again Christian, Loretta, and the following conversation, paraphrased, took place between them. Pastor Lucas, my sister, I can see that the Lord has really opened the door of ministry to you and you are making impact. Loretta, all glory be to God for his mercy and the undeserved privilege. Pastor Lucas, yes, glory be to his name. He's a good God. But what are you going to do so that not only will others benefit from the open doors, but you also will benefit? Loretta, I don't understand what you mean. Pastor Lucas, I want you and I to come together and look at the various ways by which we can make good money using the doors that the Lord has opened for you. Loretta, I'm not into ministry to make money. I just want to serve my God and be a blessing to as many as possible. Pastor Lucas, that's good, but it shouldn't stop you from looking out for yourself too. I can show you the way. Loretta, I'm not interested. I think as Christians, we should be focused on what God wants to achieve through us in the ministry, not what we can gain for ourselves. Loretta was so disgusted by Pastor Lucas' suggestion that she decided to distance herself from him so that he would never again have an opportunity to bring up that kind of conversation with her. The story is told in Acts chapter 3 of how God healed a lame man through the ministry of Peter and John. The man jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then, walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. That's verse 8. Then we are told in verses 9 to 16 that all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to, to Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. That's the New Living Translation. Peter saw an opportunity to speak about Jesus to a large number of curious people, and he immediately grabbed it and did a good job. The result was that many of the people who had their message believed it, so the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. That's Acts chapter 4, verse 4, New Living Translation. God often gives us opportunities to introduce him to people who are either on their way to hell and need the Savior, or people who are already in Christ and are hungry to learn more about him and go deeper in their relationship with him. In Isaiah chapter 35 verse 3, we are commanded to strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. That's the English standard version. Every opportunity God creates is for us to do exactly what is in his heart and give him pleasure and glory while bringing blessing and joy to others. Then he, is, then he in his own way and time, blesses and rewards us. Unfortunately, many Christians like Pastor Lucas are constantly thinking of nothing other than what they can gain personally through doors that God is opening not only to them but even to others in the ministry. Many are majorly interested in taking advantage of open doors in the ministry to make money for themselves. For instance, ushers have access to information on who gives what as tithes and offerings. And more than anything else, some of them want to get into close relationships with those they find out to be the highest givers in their church. That way, they can find ways to benefit financially from those brethren. Some others take advantage of open doors and God's gifts and talents to advertise themselves and receive glory and praise from men. Christians like that are in the lineage of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Some Christians, especially church leaders, also take advantage of ministry opportunities to advertise their church. There are also people who go out for evangelism and all they talk about is their pastor and how great a man he is. Many people over the years have used opportunities which God created for his own glory to satisfy their ego. Children of God are expected to handle every opportunity the way Peter and John handled the one the Lord created for them at the beautiful gate. 
to present Jesus, the light, to a world groping in gross darkness. What have you been doing with your own opportunities? May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.